Hello, and welcome to the Thinking Jew Podcast, where we dive deep into Torah and Judaism to uncover its hidden beauty. Come join us as we take a closer look and breathe new life into traditional Jewish ideas. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Moshe Siegel. Hello, and welcome back to episode 37 we're standing now in the final days leading up to the tragic day of Tisha B'av. As we mentioned in episode 35, Tisha B'av commemorates the destruction of both holy temples that once stood in Jerusalem. The first temple was destroyed in approximately the year 422 BCE and the second temple in approximately 70 CE. So we're talking about a destruction that took place 2,000 to 2,500 years ago. So the question is, why are we still mourning this loss today? Everyone knows, don't cry over spilled milk, and especially if it spilled over 2,000 years ago. So what are we doing? Why are we still sitting on the floor, crying while saying the kinos, the sad dirges for an event that ended so long ago? To answer this question, I want to share with you a Kabbalistic overview of the role of the temple from a creation standpoint from a book called the Shari Ora. And hopefully when we understand the temple's role on a more meta level, we'll see how the loss of the temple continues to impact us even today. The Shari Ora was written by Rabbi Yosef Gitkilia, and it's one of the greatest Kabbalistic works ever written. The Arizal, who's arguably the greatest Kabbalist ever, called this book the key to understanding the mystical studies. So in the first gate of the book Shari Ora, the author explains the Kabbalistic meaning of one of the holy names of God, and he tangentially explains the specialness and role of the holy temples. He writes as follows, It's imperative to know this fundamental idea. When God created the world, the primary residence of the Shechina element of God was in the lower worlds. And while the Shechina resided in the lower worlds, there was absolute harmony and unity between the lower and upper worlds. The pipelines were functioning optimally and great flows of blessing entered into our world. Then Adam came and sinned. This act of Adam's sin severed the harmony and cut off the pipeline, causing the Shekhinah of God to detach itself from our world. Then came Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they began the job of bringing the Shekhinah back into our lower world. They transformed themselves into vehicles to house the Shekhinah, but the Shekhinah did not reside permanently on earth yet, rather temporarily on their bodies. Then came Moses and the Jewish nation, and they built the tabernacle. Through this, they fixed the broken pipelines and rebalanced the flow and harmony with the upper worlds. But it wasn't permanently connected to the land and really to our world like it was initially in the times of Adam until King Solomon came and built the temple, which was structured with all of its parts and all of its edifices paralleling the upper worlds. Only then did the Shekhinah come down completely and reside in a permanent dwelling place in our world. And through the temple, the whole world became re-energized and the blessings began to flow down to the temple and through the temple it was spread to all of the other lands. The Shari Ora is teaching us the most unbelievable thing. God created the world with the intention that our world be closely connected to the spiritual worlds. That our spiritual state can easily influence our physical bodies and we can connect to the divine in a natural way. The same way we breathe and eat through natural function, our ability to connect to the divine and the spiritual was also a natural function. But when man sinned, it created a separation. The balance was thrown off. Then, through deep introspection and inner soul work of our forefathers, they were slowly able to bring God back down and reconnect him to our world. That process of reconnection was only completed with the building of the temple. The world, in a certain sense, at that point in time, came back to the closeness it had with God that existed only on that very first day of creation, pre-sin. The temple is referred to by our sages as the place where the upper worlds kiss the lower worlds. Kissing always being the concept of deep connection. 
the point of connection between the spiritual and physical worlds was in the temple. Therefore, miracles were commonplace in the temple. It wasn't impacted by physicality as it was more open to the spiritual. Space wasn't limiting. Meat didn't rot. Water didn't put out fires and so much more as described in the Mishnah. The place where the closest connection to God and the strongest spirituality was felt was in the Holy of Holies. That was the point of connection itself. And it extended out from there to the temple, to Jerusalem, to Israel, and eventually to the whole world. But then it was destroyed, the connection lost. The Shechina again, detaching itself from our world. And the relevance to us, even 2,500 years later, is that we're still missing, we're still lacking in that relationship. Imagine you have someone that you love so much and your lover runs away and you run around the world searching, trying to find your lover. You look everywhere. You'll never give up. You wouldn't say, it's over, the lover's gone, don't cry over lost milk. You would say, if I can only find my lover once again, I'll be able to experience that great love and connection that we once had. I'm missing that now and I so desperately want that back. This is a small glimpse of the meaning of what the temple was and what the loss still is today. With its destruction, we're like Adam after he sinned, banished and distanced from the place of God, from the Garden of Eden. The Shekhinah separated from our world and until Mashiach comes and we rebuild the third temple, we'll always be missing an element of our connection to God. I want to just now quickly review the basic laws of Tishabav. And as always, if you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out. Tishbav begins this coming Saturday night, continues until nighttime on Sunday evening. For exact times, look at your local calendar or feel free to reach out to me with your location. On Tishabav, we are prohibited from eating, drinking, bathing, or really washing our bodies at all. For the morning, the tilas yadayim, hand washing, you only wash up to your knuckles and not your entire hand. We're also prohibited from applying ointments, wearing leather shoes, or engaging in marital intimacy. We sit on low chairs or on the ground until midday on Sunday, as is the custom by mourners. We also do not put on the talis or tefillin until midday, so we therefore don't wear them for the morning shachra service. Rather, we wait until mincha to put on the talis and tefillin. The custom is to not greet people or engage in unnecessary chatter. If someone comes over to you and greets you, you can be polite, but you should really explain to them that Due to the somber nature of Tisha B'av, the custom is really not to engage with people too much. Because this is a year that Shabbos is the day before Tisha B'av, there's no special last meal before the fast. Rather, we just have the regular Shalashittis, the regular third meal of Shabbos. However, you should make sure to start early enough and be careful to finish eating your meal before sunset. That's the basic laws of Tisha B'av. And again, if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me the thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com. I'll just end with giving us all a blessing that in the merit of learning about the destruction of the temples and through the fasting and experiencing Tisha B'av that we're all going through, may Hashem see us and recognize our true desire to regain that connection. And in that merit, may we dance together soon in the streets of Jerusalem with the coming of Mashiach and the building of the third temple. Thank you for listening to the Thinking Jew podcast and for taking the time to study Torah and deepen your connection to Judaism. If you found value in today's episode, please leave us a rating or review and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or topic requests for Rabbi Moshe, please email the Thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com or visit thethinkingjew.com.